So as we've told you, housing is expected to be another big issue in Albany this year. Governor Hochul wants a five-year, $25 billion housing plan, and part of it would expand supportive housing. Just for those who don't know, supportive housing has services on site for tenants with certain needs, like those with a chronic illness or an addiction or a family that was recently homeless. We've got the details of Hochul's plan this week and what it would mean for supportive housing with Laura Mishu from the Supportive Housing Network of New York. Laura, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan, for having me. Of course. So we're talking about supportive housing, which is something that a lot of people don't know a lot about. The governor is proposing 7,000 new supportive housing units in her executive budget. She also wants to rehab 3,000 existing units. I'm wondering from your perspective, is that enough or do we need to go farther with that? Well, I think it's an incredible investment and these resources will absolutely take us a, a long way. The other thing that's amazing about it is that it's a five-year housing plan so that we can really have the predictability as developers of supportive and affordable housing to know that the money will be there year after year, which is very important. And of course, the need is great always. Uh, we do have an affordable and a homelessness crisis, um, but I do think that this will get us well on our way. Um, and the governor is really doing more than the previous administration by adding the preservation units, which is also wonderful. So tell me about where the need is here. So in terms of supportive housing, we're talking about people that are transitioning from being homeless. So where do we target these units? Is it mostly, are we looking at New York City mostly, or is it spread out across the state? What would have the best impact? Mm -hmm. So great question. Um, we absolutely have more of a homelessness crisis in the city. Uh, not, not surprising, it's a, it's a larger population, but we also do have a problem uh, with affordable housing and homelessness rest of state. So this program, uh, the supportive housing program that's been going for the last five years has developed a sufficient number of upstate uh, buildings, which has been, fabulous because it's the first time that the supportive housing program was actually statewide. So Governor Hochul is continuing that and you know we look forward to working with those upstate communities to continue to develop um, supportive and affordable housing. You know, when we look at big picture goals here, homelessness is obviously a problem. It feels like a perennial problem. How do we get to the heart of it with this supportive housing? Do we need to go beyond that 7,000 in the out years? Do we need to build on top of that? Or is this part, is this bigger five-year plan that we're talking about, is this enough to really tackle the homelessness crisis that we have going on right now? Right. So this first five years is incredibly important. Um, but we need to continue having one after the other five-year housing plans. And I do think now that we've set the tone, um, just finishing the previous five-year plan, and now we have one that I think really this governor and any governor thereafter will really want to invest in a five-year housing plan because the affordability crisis and the homelessness crisis is not easily going away. And so affordable and supportive housing are absolutely key to uh, to address both of those issues. So the unique part about supportive housing is you have these direct services providers right on site. The governor is proposing a 5.4% cost of living adjustment increase, which for people that aren't familiar, it's basically more funding to raise their salaries and retain staff because we have this problem in the human services sector where people just aren't paid enough. So they go on to other jobs with comparable salaries or even other jobs that are low stress and have the, the same salary. So with this 5.4% increase, do you think that's enough to keep this industry afloat? Can we retain these workers through that increase? Uh, another great question. The the 5.4 percent is is amazing. We were we were very very happy to see that in the executive budget, and you know really our workforce was an essential workforce during the pandemic, and we need to show that workforce that we are investing in them, that we appreciate the work that they're doing, and so this increase will go a long way. But we also need repeated increases every year because costs go up and we need to be able to retain our staff, and we don't want them once trained and working with us and having relationships with our tenants and our clients 
to then go off to another job because they can get paid, you know, more money there. So it's very important that we really invest and recognize the work of of the human services sector. It's a it's a big undertaking for these providers. I have to imagine it's stressful. When you talk about these increases that you want every year for them, do you have a ballpark number or does it depend on the year? With a 5.4%, we're talking about that's cost of living, so that's kind of based on inflation, but is there a percent or an amount that we should be increasing every year or should lawmakers and the governor play that by ear? Yes, good question. So I really feel that we need to have a consistent uh, increase every year. And I think the target of 5% would be very helpful. It would also give the sector the predictability that they would be um, able to budget for that and tell staff that that would be the case, that they could give them increases. Like we're gonna need to have, you know, anywhere from a three to 5% increase every year uh, just to keep the sector going. Um, and as you know, we really have a lot of vacancies in a number of sectors right now, and the nonprofits have not been spared, and it is a tough, stressful job. So if we're gonna keep the staff, we ne really need to keep competitive with our salaries. It's a big problem, not just for supportive housing, but for all human services administrators across the state. They've been calling for increases for years, and maybe we'll see that happen in this year's budget. but. We'll leave it there. Laura Mashu from the Supportive Housing Network of New York, thank you so much. Thank you, Dan.